So all right, so today we ran into some trouble with the projector and uh, I could not show you the, the codes that I typically show you during, uh, during the classes. So the purpose of this video is to make sure that you do not lose anything. The first code that I wanted to show you was uh, this example of add numbers until the user enters a minus one. Uh, so let's look at the, the execution of the code. So here is the uh, it's the same uh, program. So here it is. Uh, so here I have uh, entered this explicit print statement, which uh, tells the user uh, to enter a number, enter an integer, and uh, terminate with minus one. And I have created the the variable names such that they reflect their meaning. This first scanf statement is. Uh, taking that user input and storing it in the variable number and now the while loop comes in as long as this number is not equal to minus one this is what it means uh, it will continue executing all these statements this complete compound statement and the first line of that is to add the number that has been entered by the user uh, to the uh, to this variable called sum and sum here I am only expecting integer variables therefore sum is initialized to 0 and there is no harm if we use the integer value for, for sum and uh, if the first number that has been entered by the user itself is minus 1 then this condition is uh, false even at the very beginning therefore the while loop will never get triggered it will directly come out and print this uh, statement at this point sum is 0 and that is what your expected output is but if the number is not minus 1 uh, whatever we enter then this uh, statement here is asking the uh, the number to be stored in the uh, number to be added to the the previous sum the running sum and then these two statements are doing exactly the same thing as before it is asking the user again for another number and uh, storing that number uh, into this temporary variable called number so note that why do i call this a temporary variable because uh, first time you use it uh, you replace the number with uh, the newly entered number by the user so that way it is only storing that number temporarily while the sum is keeping the uh, sum uh, one after another and uh, the moment you enter let's say minus one uh, it comes back and checks this condition and at that point this condition becomes false so that number is never added to the sum and that is exactly what we wanted because we don't want that minus one to be added to, to our sum so let's see how it uh, how it performs So let's say whatever numbers we enter and finally let's say we give it minus 1 to terminate and it gives you the the sum of all these uh, numbers uh, the the idea to notice here is that the while uh, is running the same set of uh, uh, printf statement and the scanf and the sum statement over and over again uh, as long as this uh, statement here this condition here is true uh, so for also does the same thing while does it in a different way all right so that's example number one the example number two was uh, uh, the the corresponding problem to this was yeah so this practice problem where we were given a positive integer n and we were checking whether this is either divisible by three or divisible by five and if it is divisible uh, we saw this example code uh, it is going to just print that number uh, whichever is either div divisible by 3 or by 5 now in in this program i am doing a little uh, a small variant of that i am explicitly mentioning whether that number is divisible by 3 or by di uh, divisible by 5 so it starts uh, similarly uh, by asking for that integer that n until uh, uh, until this number n will be finding how many of them uh, are divisible by 3 or by 5 now you start with uh, this variable x which is initialized to 1 
and as long as x is less than or equal to n your while loop should continue that's uh, what it means and uh, for that value of x it is going to check there are two conditional statements two if conditions if uh, x divided by 3 gives a remainder of 0 that means it is divisible by 3 then it is going to print uh, it is divisible by 3 and similarly for 5 and if it is not divisible by any of them it will not do anything so it will just continue and the most important part that we have discussed is this uh, this update statement um, unless you have this update statement your code may run into an infinite loop because at that point uh, even if you uh, uh, check whether this is true or not your x is not getting updated so if this uh, condition was true it will remain true uh, it will remain true uh, forever and uh, there is no update to x therefore it will run into an infinite loop so let's uh, look at this code now So now I'm going to enter an integer, let's say 20. And now you can see that it has actually printed uh, all the numbers that are either divisible by three or by five. Uh, because in this variant, I'm also printing which one is divisible by three or by five. You can see all these numbers are either divisible by three or by five. 15 is repeated because it is divisible by both of them. And if you do not uh, have this update statement, then uh, as expected, you will run into an infinite loop. So no matter whatever number you give, as long as it is greater than one, so it is kind of stuck. Uh, it is actually calculating, but uh, uh, there is no way it can come out of this while loop. So you will have to forcefully terminate this by pressing Control C. If you ever run into uh, this kind of an infinite loop, uh, the way to come out of it is by pressing Control C. All right. So that's uh, the second example. All these codes will be posted on uh, on the course web page, so you can uh, check them out. The last example was of a nested for loop. So this was corresponding to the example. Yes, this example. So I wanted to print something like uh, this structure at every line. Uh, I have n such lines. At every line, I'm going to print uh, the number starting from one to uh, the, the index of that line. So suppose I'm at line i, I want to print one, two, three until uh, i. Right, so how should I do that? So in order to do so, uh, so I have an outer iterator uh, and I have an inner iterator explicitly mentioning that uh, what kind of variables uh, they represent. And then uh, first I'm asking for input from the user uh, about what is, uh, so uh, user's input for the value of n. And then I'm storing it in the in the integer variable n. Now notice this uh, this outer for loop. So for a while, just ignore this part. So in the outer for loop, I am running uh, the the variable starting from one to n, so and uh, incrementing it by one at every stage. Um, now this corresponds to the indices of the lines. So uh, consider this outer iterator is the is counting the number of lines. And now at every line, what I'm going to do, so I'm doing a, another repeated uh, operation and that is given by the inner for loop. So in the inner iterator, what I'm doing is I am uh, starting from one until the out outer iterator. So if this value, if the uh, the current row uh, or the line is i, I am starting from 1 to i and every time I am printing that variable, so that inner iterator variable. So this will and I am given a, given a space so that it looks nice, there will be one gap between uh, the previous number and the next number. And um, yeah, so once you are, pr uh, so here we are printing without any new line character, so they are all uh, separated by one space. And once I am done with this inner for loop, that is I have printed the whole line, 
coming out of that for loop but still inside the outer for loop I am printing a new line to go to the new new line so let's look look at this uh, example as well so let's say I have five so it just prints that uh, this gives you so after every line it is printing this print new line to come to the new line and it starts all over again uh, but with a new number and now you can try out even with larger numbers and you can see that this prints in a very similar way right uh, you can actually make it a little nicer by printing let's say percent 2d now you know how to do it so you see that there is an little bit of undulation because now from this point onwards uh, these numbers have two digits so what if we make all the numbers uh, print with two columns so if I if I do that you know uh, how it works uh, now in order to print this 20 you will not have that kind of an undulation it will be a uh, continuous movement so it, it just looks nice all right, so that is the three. That are the three examples that I wanted to discuss today. Uh, I could not, but uh, yeah. Uh, hope uh, you have liked this video.